Maybe I should just make a list. Make an appointment to get the boat moved. The door Lynn. Need to paint the boat. Need to get blocking for the boat. Rent a crane. Set up the yard to paint crab pots, which means I need to move 100 gallons of paint. Need to prep the yard for crab pot. Paint the crab pot. Oh my gosh. I have so much to do. All right. All right. Week two. Build new underwater lines. Need to build hawks. Build barrels. Put line in. Put the roof back on the southern girl. I need to put new shift cables in the southern girl. Damn it. I need to replace the wheel bearing on my crab pot trailer. Get both the crab trucks running. Oh no. Order a new cool bot and then replace the entire air conditioning unit and cool bot in the refrigerator. Need to get electricity ran to the house for the refrigerator by the shed. I need to get electricity run to the crab pot yard. Get the cap off my truck. Oh, I gotta put the rack back on the Southern girl. And then I need to shoot videos for all, every one of those things. <laughs> Oh, and I need to hire an entire freaking crew in the next week. When it comes to actual cost of crabbing, I'm gonna walk you around just my one yard and tell you about how much the things around here actually cost. And this is just a fraction of the equipment that it takes to be able to do the job that I do. This is about $1,500 in paint. The truck, 30,000. Trailer, about 1,500 bucks in that. My walk-in refrigerator was about $10,500. And then the unit broke, and then I have another $1,000 into CoolBot unit that broke, that now needs to be replaced. Place. Here's a generator. This is about five grand. All these crab pots, if you were to have every one of these built new today, it would be about $76,000. Of course, they're not all brand new, so they don't cost me exactly all that much, but these ones are. Zinks, every crab pot needs at least one, some of them two, and these are $225 for a hundred of them. And I bought close to 2,000 zincs this year. So do the math on that. Crabbing is extremely expensive. The only thing that's gonna cost you more is your mental health. And your mental health is not something that you can afford to lose maintenance on. That's why this episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. I have paid the ultimate price for not maintaining mental health. It has taken a toll on not only me, but the people around me. And I've seen a lot of people have to suffer through my own personal issues. Oh my God. I'm not catat. I might be catastrophizing. BetterHelp is an online therapy service that can match you with over like 30,000 different therapists. So with BetterHelp, dude, you can have a therapy session in your car. And I know enough of you have mental breakdowns like myself in my car. You can turn your car from your panic zone to your comfort zone. Go online, fill out a quick survey. Usually within like two days, they have you matched up with somebody that's probably gonna work. Living in 2024, guys. Commercial crabbers have TikTok accounts and you can go to therapy in your car on your cell phone. You can either do it with a text chat, Zoom call, or a phone call. Gets rid of every Every excuse you have not to go to therapy, I'm not scared to admit that. I have gone through some therapy and some therapists. Over 4 million people have already tried it and they're still in business, so they must be doing something right. Man, this thing sucks, dude. The worst haul grain gun I've ever used. I'll tell you what, I really hate being told what to do. Luckily, BetterHelp does not tell you what to do. That having somebody to just offer an unbiased opinion is worth anything to me. You can spend all the money in the world to go crabbing, but you are never gonna be able to buy your mental health Back. So you may as well get 10% off by going to betterhelp.com slash Luke McFadden. Try it today. And there we have it. 54 more bucks into the rig, all thanks to BetterHelp. I'm getting all these crab pots repaired, zinced, painted, moved to the boat, and set is probably going to cost me about five or $6,000 in labor when I'm all said and done. And you don't even know if there's going to be crabs out there. And then it costs $1,000 a day in overhead just to go check the traps to see if anything's gone in them. And that $1,000 a day does not change whether you catch anything or not. Every time you leave the dock, it costs you about a thousand bucks. I pay about $16,870 to the T for insurance as well. And insurance really kills me because it's something you have to pay to have and that you hope you never use. And if you do have to use it, then you have to pay even more money. When it comes to the rope, each one of these lines is about 200 bucks to make. And I have about $9,000 worth of these lines, if you include the cans that they all have to go in. Once you catch crabs, you gotta put them in something. So I have all these crates at 25 bucks a piece. I have about 200 of them. And when you put the line overboard, you gotta find it somehow. So we have to mark them with hawks. These are the buoys that go on each end of the line. And these things cost about 30 if you add up both of the buoys, plus PVC pipe, plus the stainless hardware and the clip and the weight and the labor to build them. And the thing about all this line and these hawks is that every year I have to build way more of them because they're always getting trashed. 
So that is an expense that's reoccurring. This is an old one, but I have a lot of power washers and those are always about a thousand bucks a piece. You gotta have spare propellers on hand. The one I paid about two grand for and I got the numbers mixed up and then was stuck with a wheel that was custom made to my boat with the wrong dimensions. So there's like three grand sitting there in propellers. Spare parts, these are orbit motors. I blow through these things. Maybe 350 bucks a piece now. Not to mention all the things that you have, you have to pay to maintain or you're gonna pay for them twice. So I probably spend 10 to 15 grand in maintenance between trucks, trailers, refrigerator units, air conditioners, crab pots, boats, everything's breaking all the time. The boat, the Southern Girl that I work out of, it was about 48,000 bucks when I bought it. And I've put a whole nother engine and another transmission into the thing. So I have north of probably 80, 90, maybe a hundred grand into the boat. Of course the boat does make you money, it takes money, to make money and then every boat you own you have to pay slip fee on that boat it ain't free to tie it up at a dock if we look inside my free scrap metal truck reefer unit a thousand dollar water heater in front of another thousand dollar water heater unit that i have just as a backup there's a hydraulic pump that was 400 bucks maybe from a failed project water pumps that of course why would you throw them away these are about 250 bucks a piece and I go through one or two a year. Here's a good example of a Caterpillar alternator that's three or four hundred dollars. Here's some orange baskets that are about 25 bucks a piece. A couple hundred dollars worth of power washer hoses over there. And this is a tank that's totally beat to crap that's almost unfixable but these are about 350 bucks a piece as a dip tank. And then underneath of here we have a a transmission that I bought and paid eight grand for and then blew it up. The same transmission would probably cost you 12 now. One of the major things that are getting people out of the commercial fishing industry is the barrier to entry and just the operating cost daily. The time sacrifice, plus the money that you can make now, which is not near what you could make, and it's getting a lot of guys out of the industry. Since a lot of guys are getting out of the industry, it's getting harder to find the supplies that we need and since there's not as many people buying it, the price of it goes up because a lot of those people have gone out of business. So now there's only one place you can get it or one place that's making the, the parts that we need because there's not as many fishermen. They have to get more for everything they sell. It's a cycle that eventually will end up putting us all out of business. Unfortunately, that seems to be the trend that the commercial fishing industry in the US is on and it really sucks. The price of crabs has not scaled with the price of everything it takes to catch crabs. In the past four years in particular, that scale has tipped the other way drastically. When I first got into crabbing nine seasons ago, a box of zincs was like, I think 75 bucks. And now that same box of zincs is $210. And back then I was getting about maybe $150, $160 on bushels of number ones, which are the money crabs. And now market is still paying about $160 to $200 for that same bushel. I would say the price of crabs has scaled half of what the cost of operation has. Our season and our fishery is so kind of up and down, you just can't count on what you're gonna catch necessarily. I can't promise a guy I'm gonna catch 30 and then only bring him 15. He may have already sold 30. You know, what's he gonna do? It's empty. And the other thing is crabs are a live commodity. The longer you hold on to crabs, the more that die. And with crabs being so valuable per piece, if you're selling them by the dozen, if you lose two dozen crabs, that could be all the money that you're gonna make on that bushel. And if you have to buy those crabs on a Monday and hold them until a Friday, you're gonna have at least two dozen dead, then you can't make any money. The industry is in a tough spot. The juice is not worth the squeeze. On the buyer's end a lot of times, but especially on the fisherman's end. The way to fix that is just to charge the consumer more money. But how much is somebody gonna pay for a dozen crabs? I mean, when does it become too much? I mean, I charge 80 to $100 for like extra larges, a dozen. Well, a lot of other places are charging up to 160. But even still, I feel bad charging my customers 100 bucks. It works crabs out of the working class diet. That's who we cut our teeth on making a market on is working class people like me and other crabbers can't even afford to eat crabs anymore. And that's not what I want. I want everybody to be able to enjoy crabs, but I also have to be able to pay the bills and advance the business. The cost goes a lot further beyond financial cost. You have to commit to it being your entire life. I really truly kind of live and die by the crab. When crabs show up, you gotta catch them. We only have a certain amount of days per year to go out and catch enough of whatever we're harvesting and to make essentially an entire year's living. When I was first getting into crabbing, I had a mentor, a CJ Camby. Who the heck is this guy? He's basically like another one of my dad's 
I kind of have a lot of dads. I have my biological father, my stepfather. I have guys like CJ, John Kellett that owns the marina. For some reasons, every time my life kind of ebbs and flows, the right person, the right knowledge with the willingness to help me appears into my life, helps me through whatever I'm trying to get through. Something I'm really, truly grateful for. it. But CJ told me, all those vacations that you take in the summer, bye-bye. All the friends that you used to hang out with, done. Buddies you used to stay out with till midnight drinking. <laughs> That's good. For all the parties you went to. Yeah, kiss that goodbye. I was like, this guy's crazy. There's no way. I can do it. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You ain't no crabber. <laughs> It's not like he's been through everything I'm about to go through and then some. Never really believed him. And then life happens. When you start to take your business really seriously, all those things really do kind of come true. More often than not in my life, CJ is right about almost everything. You're welcome. And it's kind of super annoying to be honest with you. He always says these things and I think, no, no way, that's not gonna be me. And then sure enough, nine times out of 10, it's where I end up. Better late than never. It is what it is. I'm glad he was there too pass some of that knowledge on to me. When I got into crabbing at 18, I knew nothing and I thought I knew everything. I remember catching some crabs, coming back and having no idea what to even do with them. First lesson I kind of learned is you can catch every crab you want, but if you don't have any market, meaning a place to sell them, you may as well not even catch them because crabs are very perishable and they don't last long in the bed of your truck. You have to keep them in a refrigerator as soon as they come off the boat. I had a lot of days where I was stuck with crabs at the end of the day. We got 15 minutes left and we got like two more bushels, smalls. I think somebody's gonna pull through last minute. I hope so. And then having to pedal them off for super cheap. That's actually a great way to do business if you're looking to go out of business. Just door knocking, asking for the manager, asking for the owner, trying to give them crabs for free. If you like them, call me back. There's a lot of competition in the market and if you aren't willing to bend and break for a lot of buyers they're pretty quick to cut you off there was a lot of really hard humbling years god bless the women that marry commercial fishermen they are a different breed an example of cost of crabbing that is not financial it's a beautiful day on sunday we're going to put paint on the door lid. i need to get this boat wrapped up a s a p i'd like to try to spend sundays together because get a lot of time to do that. The thing that puts the roof over our head is selling crabs and we need a place to do that. At least we're gonna get to do it together, right? Yeah, yeah. makes it so much better. <laughs> well, a lot of the bummer is that, you know, we spend a lot of time together in the winter, which that's not the bummer, that's actually right. <laughs> <laughs> The bummer is. <laughs> that's really great. Too. As soon as the days start to get nicer and all of our friends are out doing fun stuff for us is when it starts to become crunch time. There's no having fun in this household in the spring. There's work to be done. <laughs> it's not that we don't want to hang out with people. It's just that when it's time to go, it's time to go. When your to-do list is this long, you have this many days, this much bandwidth. And this much time and this much money. <laughs> and this fixed. much money. <laughs> and this much patience. You gotta get them done when you can. We got married September 30th and I was losing my mind because I was so conflicted about what to do. I'm kind of upset and very conflicted about quitting this early. I could have crabbed a whole nother month all the way through October. Never in my life I ever quit. The very beginning of October, I was weighing financial cost versus life cost. It was a hard decision for me. Not to get married, that was easy, but the, to, to wrap it up early You're was- You're still trying to find ways to justify that. You don't need to justify it. Yeah. It, it was the right choice. I know. You don't regret it. Yeah, I don't. It was just, that was a hard one because it was like a whole nother month. Anybody who's gotten married, it's an extremely stressful time to make it happen. As it should, life cost outweighs financial costs. You can always make more money. I have the rest of my life to crab till October. Can't get married twice. Can, but I'd, I'd rather not. <laughs> people gave me a lot of, a really hard time for making that decision, but a lot of those people value financial costs over life costs. That's how you end up with two weddings. Or, or more, three. <laughs> or more. But hey, you married a fisherman. You knew what you were getting into. Actually, you didn't know what you were getting. You kind of did. I did not just marry a fisherman. I married somebody who manages to get themselves into the most like interesting predicaments every single day. And that's part of what I like about being with you is that I never know what's going to happen next. It's super exciting. It's not predictable. You just live in a house and go to your same job every day and do the same thing and eat the same thing for dinner. See, I don't like jobs with ceilings, barriers, limits, any of that stuff. I would rather have life be what I make it. And the harder I work, the more return I can end up seeing. If I think about it. You find your value in working. And so when you don't have anything to do, you don't think that your life has any meaning. So you must fill it with work to feel meaningful. I guess you're right. Yeah. 
It's one of your fatal flaws, actually. It's also gotten me pretty far in a pretty short amount of time. It has. Don't always base every decision on, is this going to take the least amount of work and make me the most amount of money? Why but, do that when you could do the most amount of work for the least amount of money? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. I hope all our friends have a good time out of the bar today because it's beautiful. We will be here covered in paint. Just getting home on the Sunday. So crabbing can definitely be backbreaking sometimes, especially if you ask my friend CJ. But I have watched that guy put his body through hell and pay the ultimate physical price. I feel like I'm can't breathe. Back surgeries, therapy, cortisone shots, and it has taken a toll. I've seen what it has cost him in life, mental and emotional costs, not to mention financial costs, just because we don't have great health insurance as crappers. We pretty much have to pay for it ourselves. I would say the physical cost is honestly one of the highest prices to pay in this industry. Pretty common among all blue collar workers. Fishing is particularly hard on your body. I have tried in the past few years to be a lot easier on my body. Sometimes think that my idea of easy is not exactly the doctor's idea of easy. That is a price that I really do not want to pay. If I can't go to work, I can't make a living. I sold my motorcycle. I sold all my dirt bikes. One of them got stolen. I think it was a blessing in disguise because I cannot afford to hurt myself. That is one price I cannot afford to pay. And I always joke and say, but I'm not really really joking. I want to die on this godforsaken crab boat because I want to, not because I have to. The way I look at it, most people spend the majority of their life wanting to be able to do whatever they want. They're working the job to make the money, vacation, car, to buy the house. I'm doing the same thing. It's just not exactly the same way most people go about it. I feel like I've lived about 10 lifetimes. I don't have to wait till I retire to do, try, and experience the things that I want to try. Of course, the things I want to do are a lot different. Like going on a cruise sounds like my absolute worst nightmare. Building a truck camper and taking a trip, building a boat, turning it into a store, or going catching in crabs, or building pretty much whatever I can think of, and doing it on my own schedule is exactly what I want to do. And this job allows me to do everything that I want to do without having to work till retirement. It's allowed me to get married, it's allowed me to buy a house, it's allowed me to start a family, a dog. It's allowed me to take care of my friends and family. It's allowed me to experience things that most people would never have the opportunity. And I'm very grateful for that. It's the best job in the world. It might not pay the most and the hours are awful and lose sleep and valued time with friends and family. But in reality, I'm living the dream. It's given me the opportunity to explore the natural world in particular, meet a lot of people I would have never met in my life. I'm truly grateful every day for the life that I live and the job that I have. Every job has cost. I don't know. To me, the reward way outweighs the cost.